tribal trails The Son of God, He is near He chose to walk with us These tribal trails Tribal trails Tansi, thank you for joining us today. We are in High Prairie, and our guest today is Rois and Jerry Hale from Fairview. Thank you for joining us today. My and pleasure. Uh, very excited about uh, hearing your story, how God worked in your life. And I'd like to know a little bit about your family. You're yeah. growing up here. Okay, I was born at Eureka River. That's north of Fairview, where oh. we live. And uh, raised there through my childhood days. And we, we lived, my mom and dad lived about uh, two miles from the uh, reservation. Okay. And you're Métis, right? Yes, I am. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And so uh, I, I went and made friends with all the people at the reserve and went to school with many of the children from the reserve, same school. So they were my buddies. And so what, you're Métis, but what language did you speak? Cree. Are, are you Cree? Yeah, we're Cree. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And my dad was a white man. Okay. Did you speak Cree in the home? No, we didn't. I I often wish mom would have taught us Cree, yes. you know? And, yep. and dad encouraged her too. Yeah. But somehow, you know, we didn't want to, and she didn't want to teach us yes. bad enough, so we didn't learn it, you know, yep. just a few words. So tell me about your home life. What was it like? It was happy. We had a happy home. There was uh, nine of us. There was only eight at one time because the oldest one was killed before the youngest one was born. So there was eight at a time. And uh, my mom was Roman Catholic. So she, every so often, she'd go to the Eureka River Hall for when the priest would come. And she'd usually say, does anybody want to go to church with me? And Nobody did, but I would go. I would always go. It seemed like I had that. I had a something, you know, for God right from the start. Okay. Yeah. So I would go, but uh, our our childhood was was happy. We got to ride horses and do things that. You so know, you were raised on a farm. On a farm, yeah. My dad was a trapper to begin with when him and mom married, and so then he. He trapped enough, so he finally got enough money to buy a half section okay. of land and then became farmers. Oh, okay. Yeah. My mom's folks lived on the reserve. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Tell me about your family, about your grandpa. Well, part of us were dark haired, like our mom, okay. dark skin. Part of us were white, like our dad, you know, so... But I, I, I remember my grandpa. I loved it when grandpa would come down. Like mom, mom would only wait so long. And, and he would be Cree? Yeah, he was Cree, yeah. Oh. And Scotch. Oh, okay. There was Scotch blood in my grandpa. Oh, okay. And uh, Cree. And so my mom was raised there until she was, uh, I think she went into grade three, walking up from the bottom of that river up to the top. There was a school. And when she turned grade three, they moved from there. So that was my mom, she told us that. And she would love to go up to the reserve every so often from our farm where we I was raised and bring my grandpa down every oh, so often. Oh, and your often. grandpa was on the reserve. Yeah, he lived up there. Oh, okay. My grandma was gone. I never knew her. She died when before I was born. Oh, okay. Mom said she was fleshing a moose hide when she oh. jabbed herself in oh. with the with the what? fleshing the bone. bone with the fleshing yeah. bone. Yeah. And after that, she was never well. She she yes. got sick. Yes. So she must have been working very hard. hard. Yeah, yeah, that's hard work. Yeah. That is. <laughs> I know because I've done. My mom and I have tanned a yes. few moose hides. But anyhow, I never knew her. But my grandpa, I knew. And mom would go and get him, you know, and bring him down and feed him, you know, and make sure he was healthy again and then take him back. 
But he was a good grandpa. He liked to bounce us on his knee, you yes. know, when we were yeah. little. And uh, I, you know, I just seemed like he so just. I, I didn't connection. know him for a long time before he was gone. But I remember that connection of Grandpa and the reserve and the people up on the reserve. I knew most of those, the couples by name, you know, and yeah, yeah and the chiefs and. Yeah, and their children. We went to what the same school. What kind of impression did that make on you? I was very happy that I could be part of two worlds. You know, like I, I was part of that one. Yeah. If I wanted to be, but if I didn't want to be, I could go to the white man's world. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and yet <coughs> most of the children that went to the school, I didn't know it then, but they were matey too. Yeah. Yeah, but there was, you know, there was such a mixture that, as I remember back, you know, that was hard to, to distinguish. And so you went to school. I did. I went yeah. to. Tell me something about yourself. Who about are myself? you? Who are you? I'm not sure who I am. I just okay. know that Jesus found me, and I'm not the same person I was when I started out. I had. You know, I wandered a lot in my in my thoughts, you know, trying to figure out who I really was. Right. But it seemed like some after my my oldest brother was killed, there was some neighbors moved in next door to us yeah. and taught us, you know, taught mom and dad about the Bible and Jesus and and that's where it started to make sense to me, you know, who who I was and why okay. I was on this planet. And how old were you? Uh probably 12, around there, yeah. And so that's really when I started seeking the Lord and could feel his presence with me when I was, go to these house meetings. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. Somewhere beyond the grave There is a land That Jesus went to prepare By his own hands And for the sake by grace Thing okay. in my teenage growing up years, yeah. you know, and I learned to play the guitar when I was uh, 13 or 14. Oh, okay. And I loved singing Kitty Wells songs. Those oh, were my right. favorite. Yes. And I tried to sing like Kitty Wells. Yes. And it was easy for it me to... It was God who made Honky Tonk Angels. <laughs> that was one of them. Was that one of them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on the other side of town or some of those old songs. But, you know, uh, I just found that, you know, singing was my gift from God. Okay. And it didn't take long. You know, even as a child, my sister and I, she was two years older than me, we used to sing lots. Yeah. So singing was always my gift. Yeah. Well, I came to the Lord when I was 14. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I wanted and to know His that. Holy Spirit visited me. Yeah. And I would try and sing, and, and I couldn't because the Holy Spirit was so real in me. i just cry. Mm -hmm. So I, I knew there was something happening, but I didn't know what. So yeah. after we married, yeah. I was 17 years old when we married, and Jerry led me to the Lord in this, with the sinner's prayer. And that's when I, I really committed myself to the Lord. Lord. Yeah. So up until then, it was just like I was going in a circle, you know, until I finally came to the the middle of the circle and there was a stake there and I was 
died right there, yeah, right there. until oh. Jesus got me. Oh, okay. And I've yeah. lived ever since for yeah. him now. I, yeah, you said I was a wild, wild. I was. Thing. It was easy for and, me to be the life of the party yes. wherever I was. And so did you see a change in you after you came to know the Lord? Uh, not just right now. You know, it took a few years. Mm -hmm. You know, in fact, it took, uh, you know, when I accepted the Lord as my Savior and Jerry led me in the prayer and our family started, then it took years before I quit doubting that I was really saved. Right. Seemed like I had a doubt. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't, you know, I guess the devil didn't want to let me go. Yeah. He wanted me on his team yeah. instead of God's team. So he would, every so often, he'd bring this to my mind. You're not really saved, yeah. you know. And and if I said something I knew I shouldn't say or, yeah. you know, then that, was, the that was when it would happen. And then I'd start doubting again. Yeah. So one day I decided I'd had enough of that doubting. And, and I, you know, I was out washing clothes and hanging them on the clothesline. And this old doubt and fear came upon me. And I thought, well, that's it. I went in the house and I got my Bible and and I turned to, uh, it was in John. You know, John 14 okay. is always my favorite chapter. Okay. Yeah. But anyway, where it says that I am the truth, the way, and the life. Yes. And that got me. Mm -hmm. I thought, oh, Lord, forgive me. I have been doubting and fearing that I wasn't saved all this time. How, and I wasn't trusting the Lord. And he wanted me to trust him that what his word said was true. When I did that, that day, it just seemed like I had stepped on the devil's head right there. And, you know, I never doubted again. Oh, praise, the, praise Lord. the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. Yeah. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. So Rose, tell me a little bit about uh, that partner, the guy that's sitting beside you there. Well, you know, I remember when I was about 10, sitting in the school, in the yard, you know, of the school, there, me and some of my other buddies, and we got talking about when we get married, you know, and stuff like that, yes. like girls do. And I said, I don't, if I ever get married, and I was about 10, I said, I want to marry a Texan, and I want him to be tall. Yes. I said, I want him to be handsome, taller than me, you know, so he can reach down and get me in his arms. And uh, I had him picked out. And he, I said, he has to look good in jeans. You know, I don't want, you know, I want a nice slim one. <laughs> and the girls will, you know, to this yeah. day, they laugh they about laugh. that because I well, said I that. So. I had no idea yeah. what a Texan was. <laughs> yeah. you know? Sounded good. But anyway, when I was 16, okay. I met my Texan, you know, and that summer. How did I, you meet him? Well, my dad had taken a job. My dad was really good with horses. Like he was, oh. he, could, he was a uh, bronc buster. Oh. rode in the Calgary Stampede, the early ones and stuff like that. You know, he was a cowboy. So he had taken a job from Jerry's dad herding sheep on the Peace River Hills. Oh, okay. And, of course, me, I had to be in that picture. I had to take dad a fresh horse when his horse was tired, take him that horse and, and bring the old one home. And so Jerry's dad was down there and he met me. And I guess he went home and, and told Jerry that he there's a girl down there that he should meet. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Aww. how we met. Aww, yeah. Okay. So, so what was the Texan doing in northern Alberta? My dad heard the Lord speak to him about moving north. Okay. And an old friend told him you should go to Alberta because you have a bunch of boys. So he moved oh. to Alberta and he, and he started a church. And then later, God called him to be the pastor. So Church just, where? In Worsley, Alberta. Okay. And I just happened to be along, and he came home one day talking about this girl that was down at the river helping him cut the tails off of the sheep. So I said, I have to meet that girl. That sounds like the girl I need to meet. So he told my mom 
And how old were you? I was, I was uh, 18. Yeah, 18, you were 18. and you were 15. 18 at that time. Yeah, okay. Yes? Yeah. And uh, when I met Rose, I, right away I knew, I just knew that there was something special about this lady. Mm -hmm. And when God puts people together, it's special. It is. Amen. So how, how long after that that you got married? We met on June the 21st okay. that year, and we married October the 24th. Of that year? Yeah, 1959. Oh, okay. oh you fell in love pretty fast there. Just pretty kids, fast. and we're just, just kids. kids. Yeah, just kids. Yeah, I knew I wanted to grow old with this man. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Your text him that you knew when That's right. a child. That's <laughs> right, an answer to prayer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so tell me about your life together. So you knew the Lord? I had I had given my heart to the Lord just prior to that. I had recommitted my life. When I was 12, I asked the Lord into my heart. But when I was 18, I had a bad wreck and almost got killed. And I said, Lord, if you let me live, I'll live for you the rest of my life. So I had done that. And when I met Rose, and I said, wow, Lord, this is special. And he had been so good to us mm -hmm. the rest of our days together. Did you ask her if she knew the Lord? I did not it right away. Right away, I did not ask her that. But yeah. we 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 all, we talked about the Lord very soon after we started courting and oh, okay. getting to know one another. Yeah. And it was such a good courting we had oh, nice. to get to know each other. When we started singing together, like he'd oh, come. It well, was twenty miles with... on a gravel road. He'd come to see me. We'd be singing together, you know, oh, some of those yeah. old songs and back yeah. in the sixties. And so how did, how did you started your life where? On, on the farm or? On yeah, the, in Worsley. Like in his Worsley. mom and Jerry's mom and dad went back to Texas for a couple oh, of years. Okay. One week after we was married, they left, went back. Oh, and yeah. a month later, that's when I got these cut off, or took off in a grain auger. Tell me about that. That was kind of tough. Okay. We didn't have any money and there was no compensation. and. And you were in, you were just married. We yeah, just, just married. over a month. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Just when it happened, some people drove in our yard. Oh. That God provided to pick me up to take us over to our neighbors, and He took us to the nurse, and then took us to the hospital. So, mm -hmm. every step of our walk in our life, God is taking care of us. Yeah. Tell me some of those steps. One of the steps was we have had five children, beautiful children, we have sixteen grandchildren. And those have all been special because they are all, children are all born healthy and, and we were able to provide enough food for them with God's help for us. And when we lost our farm, that was a tough time for us. I'd but like but to again, hear, God, I'd like to hear about that. Again, yeah. God had a plan for us. Yeah. And I didn't know of that about his plan. Yeah. But, he, but when we moved over into BC and I got to meet people that didn't know Jesus and God was involved with that. They began to give us our heart desire to share with people. People give their heart to Jesus. It was just all along how God provided, and God provided this, and God provided that. How did you feel when you lost the farm? You know, Rita, I really... You had five kids at the time. Yeah, they were grown. Yeah, they, the last one they was only grown. 16. Our baby was 16, Annabelle. But I felt like there was something else that... Oh. that God had for us, you know, than just to be, stay there, you know, and, and raise the family and, you know, like, I just felt like there was something, something somewhere else. And I guess that's when I started really seeking, you know, to the walk with the Lord that, that went much deeper than just going to church every day when the door is open yeah. and be there, you know, have a personal relationship and be ready to go when he says, I need you over here. Yeah. You know, so I didn't feel like, like Jerry did. I felt like it was a, a door opening and Lord, what would you have? Instead of a door closing. Yeah. And door so opening. then uh, when we went and we, we took up residence there at that old rundown lodge and restaurant, I felt like when I give a drink of water to a stranger, I was doing it in the name of the Lord. And it was, uh, it was, uh, 
a blessing. Just a blessing. Yes, I couldn't be mad at God for not leaving us on the farm, not not even knowing what was ahead you know, for us. That's when I really learned to trust Him. Yeah. And you know, I guess that's when I developed the the nothing just happens attitude. You know, because right. in the life of a Christian, I don't believe anything just happens. It's God. He wants us to do something or, you know. So that's where I really learned to serve Him. We can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. So you were in that lodge for a while. Yeah, not long. Not long, and then what did you do? That's when we kind of, we moved down to a what I called our blue heaven. We were beside oh, a lake. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> we were beside a beautiful lake with mountains and mountain goats and, you know, and, and uh, the people that bought the lodge from us were paying us, you know, so we had money. Yeah. So You're back we on could your just, feet again. <laughs> just kind of, you know, just make friends with the native people and take them wood and and be there for them if they wanted to come and pray at our house or sing gospel songs or, you know, just, just enjoy. It was, it was awesome. We did that for about five years before we were fully paid for the lodge. And then we moved back to Alberta because that's where our family was. Yeah. Finally, we had a couple of neighbors that, that uh, come one morning and say, guess what I just did last night? Said, well, he said, I, I knelt by my bed and gave my heart to Jesus. And that was very special. The first one that we were able to lead to the Lord in that area. So then I began to say, thank you, Lord. Yeah. Yes. You continue to lead us. and We'll give you praise and honor and glory. Yeah. And that was the beginning of your ministry yeah. together? Yeah. Yeah. For the Lord? Yeah. Well, I, I guess it started when we were married, really, you know, but... You know, it's just on and on and on. on And there's, you know, it's not all, you know, good times. We've had lots of bad times, but the good times outweigh the bad. Jesus is good. And he did it all for us, you know, just. So so people came by and wanted to buy our place. And we said, okay, Lord, if that's what you want. That was the lot? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we sold it and then we moved back to Alberta. And we end up buying our farm back, and we begin, oh. begin to have a gospel jamboree. The same, the same farm. Same farm. Okay. The same old farm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it became it was awesome. So, again, what God did. Yes. God put it on our hearts to do that, and and people got from there, and they they got born again, they got saved. And wow. That spurred our hearts of what really God wanted us to do with our music. So, yes. as we began to share it wherever we could. So he picked out a valley for me. He leads me beside still water. Somewhere in a valley below. Now we're spending time with the people at the Doig. At where? At the Doig River Reserve. It's north of Fort St. John. Oh, okay. We just had a gospel jamboree there with them, and it yeah. was wonderful. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah, so God is still at work. Music. Music is good for the heart. Music. It is. Yeah. Yes, yes, God knows that. Yeah. He made us like that. Yeah. So, Rose, do you like to write? I do. Yes, and uh, you wrote a book. So what prompted you to write a book? I've always kind of liked writing, you know, even as a child, you know, I could write a funny story and make the teacher laugh and the kids laugh. And, you know, so I don't know, I guess it's when Jerry wrote his book. And I think it was in 1998, his book. And so then... What's the name of your book? I Never Walked Alone. Okay. Uh, One of my old school teacher's husband said, Jerry... You need to write down your history because your grandkids would like to know some of your history. Right. So he encouraged me to write a book. Okay. And and I never walked alone refers to the Lord? Yes. And I'm so glad God put it on my heart to, to write it. The history about about God's walking with us through life if we let him. Yes. He just wants us to recognize that he's guiding and mm-hmm. taking care of us. 
And it's so wonderful not to be alone, recognize it. God has been with me. That's a wow. That, that is special. Yeah. Do you know the poem, uh, Footprints? Yes. 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 He, he has carried me many times, many times. This, through the sad times, and all of us going to have some sad times yeah. and hard times, but if we, just, if we just can get past that feeling sorry for ourselves and want to hide in a cave so nobody can find us, say, Lord, here I am. Use me. When we can honestly pray, Lord, use me, yeah. he will. Yeah. We're all the same before God. Yes. Yeah. He yeah. loves us. He died for us. And he wants us to share with each other. That is so wonderful. Yes. Yeah. Wonderful God. And it is true. We never walk alone. True. He, he is there with us. Yes. Yeah. What's the name of your book, Rose? My book is called Nothing Just Happens. I, I just I just happen to have a copy with me. Oh, good. <laughs> this is going to be yours when this interview oh, is over. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And anyway, I wrote this book. Yes. Uh, just It's my life story, my autobiography. So my testimony and everything is in here. And, and the I'm title gonna, of your book is? is Nothing Just Happens. Because I believe that's, that in the life of a Christian, Nothing just happens. God has it all planned. And I wrote a song to match it. Sometimes we are burdened with sorrow and pain. We're sure we will never be happy again. Our friends have deserted and left us alone. Few comforts to claim as our own. Nothing just happens in your life or mine, though trouble surround. Thank you so much, Rose and Jerry, for your life story. It is so good to see how God guided you step by step through your lives and planned it out for you. God also has a plan for your life. He wants you to live with him and be his child. Jesus Christ died on a cross for your sin so that you can have a relationship with the living God. If you have questions, call us. We'd love to talk with you and share how God's word can be an encouragement to you. You can also be encouraged by our free annual calendar, which includes Bible verses. We're glad to send you one. <laughs>